Hello, welcome to Academy Learning it comes much much easier. In this video, we are going to be solving your test questions on phase 113. And the reason why I'm doing this is so that when you go to the exam hall and you see repetition of these questions, you, you'll be able to tackle it. So we have this question: a car travels 20 km due north and then 35 km in a direction of 60 degrees west of north. Find the magnitude of the resultant displacement. So when we see this type of questions involving two magnitudes, it can be displacement, it can be forces, and we have an angle between them. Find the magnitude of the resultant displacement. What comes to our mind is the cosine rule, and the formula goes like this. The resultant squared is equal to the square p squared plus q squared of the displacement plus 2pq cos theta. Now, don't allow pq confuse you. You can use a, b, you can use any variable. So now, substituting our resultant square will be equal to p, let's take p to be 20 squared plus q, 35 squared plus 2 in bracket 20 times 35 p times q cos 60 our theta is 60 so solving this we have r square equal to 20 square is 400 plus 1225 then plus we have when we open this we have 1400 times 0 0.5 so solving for that, our resultant score will be equal to 400 plus 1225 plus 700. 1400 times 0 0.5 gives us 700. So summing all of them together, our score is equal to 2325. So to get our resultant displacement to be the square root of 2325. And our resultant is 48. Point two one kilometers. So this is how we approach this kind of question, and these are answer. So here we have another question. What would be the resultant force of a body of mass fifty kg when it moves with a uniform velocity of ten meter per second? All of us will pause the video right now. Then we solve, and after we finish solving, we've gotten an answer. Let's write it in the comment section below. Then we can continue the video to see if we. Got the right answer. Welcome back. For us to solve this question, we have to lean back to the first Newton law of motion, which states that a body will remain at rest or in uniform motion. Uniform motion means a constant velocity until that body is acted upon by an external force. That external force could be the resultant force. So now looking at this question, if we look closely at the law, we'll find that it tells us two things. That a body at rest or a body moving with a constant velocity has a resultant force of zero. And then the second thing we tell us is that a body will have, will have a resultant force only when it moves from rest or it changes its velocity. So now looking at this question, we have what with the resultant force of the body of mass 50 kg when it moves with the uniform velocity of 10 meters per second. Let's look at this word, uniform velocity. It means that our resultant force is equal to zero. Why? Because this body is moving in a uniform velocity. And from the law, when the body is at rest or moving in uniform velocity, constant velocity, there is no resultant force, no external force. So moving to the next question, we have when taking a penalty kick, the footballer applies the force of 30 Newton for 0.05 seconds. If the mass of the ball is 0.075 kilogram, calculate the speed with which the ball moves off. So we have our force to be 30 Newton. We have our time to be 0.05 seconds. We have the mass M to be 0.075 kilogram. And our velocity is unknown. So we're going to remember the formula for force is mass times acceleration and we can deduce that the force is equal to mass times acceleration is change in velocity over time. So we are asked to find velocity, making velocity subject formula, we have F equal to N V 
over t. So multiplying both sides, we'll be having ft equal to mv. We're looking for velocity, dividing both sides by m. We have velocity equal to ft over m. So substituting, we have force to be 30 newton times time to be 0 0.05 seconds over mass to be 0 0.075 kilogram. So solving 30 times 0 0.05 is 1.5 over 0 0.075, which gives us 20. Now velocity is in meter per second, 20 meter per second, and these are answer. We have another question. A car starts from rest and accelerates uniformly until it reaches a velocity of 30 meters per second after 5 seconds. It travels with uniform velocity of 30 meters per second for 15 seconds and is brought back to rest in 10 seconds with a uniform retardation, determining the total distance covered. So representing this on the velocity time graph, so we have our velocity to be and our time to be at. A car truck starts from rest, so it has zeros at rest, velocity is zero. Starts from this point and accelerates uniformly. It kept on accelerating till it reached a velocity of 30 meters per second. So we have 30 meters per second here. Then after five seconds, this is the time part, so five seconds. From year to year, as we have 0 to 5, it travels with uniform velocity, so it did not change its velocity, it was still 30 meters per second, of 30 meters per second for 15 seconds. So this becomes 15 plus 5, that's 20. Then, and it is brought back to rest in 10 seconds, so it comes down back to rest in 10 seconds, that's 20 plus 10, 30. With the uniform retardation, determine the total distance. So from here to here is 5 seconds, from here to here is 15 seconds, and from here to here is 10 seconds. So, in calculating the total distance covered, one way to do that is to find the area of each of the shapes. If you can notice, we have a triangle at this point, we have 5 here, and then we have 30 meters per second here. We we'll have a rectangle. Here's 15 and here's 30. Don't mind the dimensions. Then also we have a triangle. Here is 10 and here is 30. So if you can find the area of this and add them up, it will give us the total distance covered. So of a triangle, the area is half base times height. So 1 over 2, the base is 5, the height is 30, plus area of rectangle. 15 times 30 plus area of this triangle half base times height 30. So now solving them, half of 5 times 30 is 150. That gives us 75 plus 15 times 30, 450 plus Half of 10 times 30, that's 300 is 150. So summing all of them together will be the total distance covered, S total. Equal to 450 plus 150 is 600. 600 plus 75 is 675 meters. So total distance covered. And so we are done with this. So what if they ask us to find the acceleration of the car? Notice that the car only accelerated from start till it reached the velocity of 30 meters per second. So it means our acceleration, the acceleration is giving us change in the velocity over time. So from rest, the, initial, the final velocity was 30 meters per second minus initial is zero because it started from rest over five seconds. So we have 30 over 5, which is 6 meter per second square. So this will have as the acceleration of the car. And so if we are asked to calculate the deceleration, that's negative acceleration, we can say deceleration. 
it would be now the velocity at this point was 30 meters per second now the velocity at this point is zero so our final will still be zero minus initial will be 30 over time covered 10 10 seconds so the deceleration will be equal to minus 30 over 10 which is 3 minus 3 meters per second squared so we can see that because of this negative it signifies that it is deceleration if that's the implication of this negative sign so if they ask us to find the total distance this is what we use and we'll get it find the acceleration this is what we use I will get this and deceleration this so thanks for watching we've come to the end of today's video if you are watching this video right now and you're yet to subscribe to this channel make sure you do that right now to get notified each time we post a new video each time we post a new content you don't want to miss any bit of what is happening here so share to your departmental group share to your friends thanks for watching bye for now Thank you.